Moin! This is a dandy horse, or a velocipede, or a Dresine. Being the first means of transport to make use of the two-wheeler principle, it's regarded as a forerunner of the modern bicycle. Invented in 1817 by Karl Dreis, it has always fascinated me, so I decided to recreate the model of the height-adjustable version. Yes, there were many numerous variations of this vehicle and it is difficult to imagine that 200 years ago people actually moved quite fast through the streets with these things. But now let's assemble this 57-piece model. Have fun! First, we need to print all the parts. You can download them for free. In the description to this video is a link to one of the popular portals. There are over 55 parts in total. I have decided to print the dandy horse in woodfill filament on the one hand because it is the closest to the original material, on the other hand because you can tighten screws wonderfully in the soft material. There are more parts. For these I choose simple PLA, like the saddle or the wheel tires. And this is what the whole thing looks like. Beside the printed parts, you will maybe need a screwdriver, possibly a hammer, probably plastic glue, and of course screws. Also, a thin threaded rod is suitable very well. If you want to cover the saddle with leather, like I did, get yourself some thin fake leather. The nuts and bolts that go with the kits are M3 and M2. The threaded rod is also M2. Brass screws look very good, by the way. So, let's get started. Alright, for the wheels we take a wheel hub and 8 spokes. We insert these into the hub. This should work with light pressure. Make sure that the spokes are oriented correctly. The curvature must point outward. This is important so that your wheel is not wobbly later. Now place the four wheel segments on the spokes. Here you can help carefully with a small hammer, carefully. When everything looks flush, it's time for the wheel tire. This should fit tightly around the construction. With all precision, it is of course always possible that clearance does not fit completely, so adjust the extrusion width in your slicer if necessary, a little bit. When the wheels are ready, put a M3 screw through them, the wheel should turn freely. Next, we will work on the saddle frame. You can see the parts for it here. This frame consists of a support, an armrest construction and a balancing board. There is also a cross block for height adjustment. Start with the beam and fix the post for the armrest and the balancing board with glue. Then glue on the height adjustment. The whole thing looks like a strange little airplane. You can also mount the armrest directly or, like me, wait and cover it with leather later. Now we put the main frame together. Look for the large beam with the many holes. On this we mount the upper part of the steering. Make sure that the flat side is at the bottom. Now take the front fork and see if it is well aligned. Cut off a few centimeters of the threaded rod and use it to connect the fork and the main beam. Then you have to fix the lower part of the height adjustment. Great! Now to the handlebar. It is best to glue them together. After that, screw it to the front part of the front fork with a screw as usual. The 
handlebar now rests on the threaded rod. We're making quite good progress. Next, we now bolt the assembled saddle frame to the main frame. Use the M2 screws to connect it to the crossbars at the front. From the threaded rod, we build height adjusters where two nuts serve as handles. Then connect the saddle frame to the main frame at the desired height. Finally, one more screw goes to the balancing board. Now we complete the front fork and attach the rear fork to the dandy horse. I think you know what to do, right? Screws. The threaded rod is quickly shortened and it already looks like a bicycle. We will now cover the saddle and armrest with leatherette. This is basically quite simple. Draw the parts on paper with generous offset. Then cut them out and use them as a template for the thin leatherette. Now glue these leather pieces to the saddle. Trim off the excess leather and continue with the other parts. You can then glue the saddle. Great! Now you can color the leather with the airbrush. It's best to use several shades of black and grey for this. Start with the darkest tone and work your way gradually to lighter grey. This creates the effect that the leather already appears a little worn. The leather structure is well preserved by the thin airbrush layers. Now glue the remaining parts together and place them on the dresina with glue. Perfect! Now you could attach the fittings to the forks and fix the wheels with the M3 screw. I have decided that these parts should also be real metal, which is why I will now electroform them. Um, that is completely up to you. If you want to do that as well, do it. I've already shown how to electroplate in several videos, so I'll just show this process and fast forward. If you want to know how it works, just click in the top right corner or check out the description to this video. The parts look great, scratches and all, but way too clean, so aging. For this, I use a patination solution in this I will dip the parts and after a short time wash off with water. This will stop the effect. Now you can reattach them. By the way, the brass screws also react wonderfully to the patina. But I decided to leave them shiny. With that we are done. I hope you had a fairly understandable tutorial. I would be happy if you download and assemble the model. Consider subscribing to my channel and have a wonderful day.